Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Coolers WP Blab episode number 147 Prioritizing Human Interaction in Your WordPress Business. Uh, WP Blab is sponsored by the following folks over at, let's see, we got Beaver Builder, we got Server Press, <laughs> we got Kinsta, and Vendor Fuel. Speaking of ServerPress, ServerPress Maker's desktop server, they make local WordPress development easy. Check them out over at serverpress.com. Beaver Builder, I want to tell you about Beaver Builder for just a second. So Beaver Builder is one of those uh, one of those tools that I can I can quickly build a site. Bridget is literally just dragging and dropping and throwing pieces together using Beaver Builder. Um, you know, for for a time I've been coding websites just by hand. I don't have to do that anymore. I just drag and drop all the different modules out there that I need. And um, and to be perfectly honest, if the modules that are built into Beaver Builder just aren't there, no problem. There's plenty of extra companies out there that are building additional um, add-ons and features that you can add in there. So go take a look over at them over at beaverbuilder.com. We appreciate them for helping us out. So um, I do want to let you know that you can subscribe to this show as a podcast. You can go over to wpwarcore.com slash subscribe, where you can learn how to subscribe this on, um, let's see, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, YouTube, Spotify, any place that great WordPress podcasts can be found. So feel free to go take a look at that. Also, if, you have, listen, if you're listening to us and not watching us, you can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on Facebook. You can even watch us while you're standing in line at the grocery store on Twitter. Just swiping by and you'll see us sitting there talking. You can go do that over there too. Hey, pick me up a Snickers. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, Bridget, we're going to be rude real quick. And before we go and introduce our friend here, tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. I just stubbed my toe on the desk. <laughs> Multiple toes, actually. I don't know. If that's how coordinated I am. But fortunately for you, I am mi much better at marketing. You can find out more at bridgetbuller.com. And I have a special promotion, not really a promotion. I have a donation. I am donating one hour of consulting every month to somebody in WordPress because y'all need help and I can't take it anymore. It's not even out of love. It's just because it's driving me crazy. I know you can use some help and you won't pay for it. So I'm going to give it to you because <laughs> all a rising tide lifts all boats and <laughs> we're in low tide over here on WordPress. Let's get so what are, together. What are you donating? What are you donating there? I'm donating an hour of my consulting time. Oh, well, that's awesome. So it's, that's worth $175 retail. <laughs> and um, I actually, February is already taken, which is, today uh march april you never know i mean i'm not gonna say oh, i'm only doing it for 2020 i'm not recording it i'm not reusing it as content so you don't have to worry about your privacy or me revealing all your secrets client confidentiality and all that but i will put you on my mailchimp list for pre-sales and then you can see when i send you emails like i did yesterday giving you a collection letter template because y'all need to get paid so you can hire marketers, even if it's not me. Love Bridget. <laughs> I feel like that needs a hand heart. <laughs> it does right? need a hand heart. For those looking, for those who are visually impaired or listening on audio, I am now doing the perfect hand heart. <laughs> right at right at my heart center. Namaste. There you go. I'm Jason right. Tucker. You can find me over at Jason Tucker on Twitter. My website is jasontucker.blog. I do this show as well as another show called WP Water Cooler, which I talked about just a minute ago. Feel free to go take a look at that. We're going to be talking about uh, WordPress 5.4. Beta 1 just came out. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that and kind of the interesting things that are happening with uh, Google and a few other folks that are kind of getting involved in the different functionalities in there including sitemap. So feel free to go take a look at that over at wpwarco.com. We'll be streaming live at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific today. And if you're listening, you'll just have to wait till the next Friday to be able to watch us live. Well, we were perfectly rude. Now, Amber, tell us about yourself. Um, I like rude people. My name is Amber. <laughs> um, I'm a co-founder and a storyteller at Amplitude.media. 
where we do, uh, we build brands, websites, and big ideas. So, um, and uh, I like humans. I think they're delicious. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Awesome. Uh, not cannibalism because, you know, we would need a little bit of lime and cilantro with that if, exactly. if you're in Phoenix. Right. Exactly. Just throw them on the so. ground, let them, let them cook and then pick them up and you're good to go. Right. Yep. Oh exactly. man. I am so tweeting that out. I just wrote it. <laughs> on paper. So, and, so uh, we were doing a whole Twitter thing uh, and we were like, okay, I, I said, that's it. We're filling up our blab calendar. I can't take this anymore. I have been a terrible co-host. I'm not pulling my weight. Jason didn't say that. Bridget said that to Bridget because I am my own best advisor. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, Bridget, guess, what are you super passionate about? She's like, well, what was the subject be? <laughs> and like, whatever you think, the pitch me a subject. Oh, you mean about? Dinosaurs? I'm like, <laughs> dinosaurs? <laughs> what? Which one is your favorite? I'm like, T Rex, because they're funny. Yeah, yeah I, I was, I, I, I didn't quite understand what was going on with that because. <laughs> If I remember correctly, I was on a ladder at work and I saw that text go through and I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> and I didn't have enough time to, to swipe back and kind of look at what was going on. So so tell me, what is this about dinosaurs and, and what are we talking about today? The dinosaur thing is my, my trick for people who don't like networking. So I know the tooler tip of the week is at 45 minute marks. I'll have a second tooler tip, but I, I'm, a, like, I'm an extrovert. I generally love networking events. I love all of the things that are human. And, but I always, I always gravitate towards the people who are the introverts that are standing by themselves in the corner, mostly because it's my job as an extrovert to make friends for introverts. And so, oh. <laughs> um, but it's also the people who are usually the most interesting to talk to. Um, but when I talk to them, they're always like, it's so intimidating. There's so many people. I don't know what to say. I'm like, um, and they're like, I don't know how to, and they don't want to sell themselves. I'm like, good. Cause those are the worst people ever, like ever, ever. And so, um, I always tell them to have an interesting question to ask that has nothing to do with the, con the conference or the event or themselves. And just say, I'm just curious what your favorite dinosaur is, is my favorite question. And it throws people off and it makes them go, out of work mode and into like their five-year-old self who's like, what is my favorite dinosaur? And it just, it just changes the conversation and it makes it a lot more fun and engaging. And so, which is what I like to do. And I like to make people feel awkward. Not do really. any, do any people say that they like the one with the silent P? Um, so I actually asked that of a client one time. <laughs> I was like, we were talking and, um, we were talking and he, uh, he said something about his son. And I said, oh, how old's your son? And he's five. I said, what's his favorite dinosaur? And he's like, he says, it's, it's a pterodactyl. But he's like, I didn't know how to spell it. I didn't know it started with a P until we went to the National Science Museum. And then, his, and then he's like, and then my kid's like, dad, everybody knows the P is silent. <laughs> that is adorable. But it's just, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot better question than, so what do you do? Or are you married? Or do you have like it's not it's personal in a way that's like not invasive if they're not ready to have that conversation yet. Yeah, that's an so. excellent tip. Wow, and it, a little icebreaker there. It works on dating sites too. P.S. So no, I on dating sites I quit them all this year. But I, what I was doing is, what's your nickname? Oh, uh. so I did. What's your favorite dinosaur for a long time? But uh, now I, like I do. That. Now I do, um, uh, this is a test. Um, you have to, whatever's closest you can reach with your right hand, you have to use it right now to defend yourself against a giant polar bear. What is it? How do you use it? And did you win? It's and they die, they die every time. <laughs> and then I say, my condolences. What should I tell your family? It's a, gel it's a jelly belly draft. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, Jason died drunk and happy. <laughs> no, with jelly bellies. <laughs> but it tells you a lot about a person. Like when you ask different questions, and so I think that we just need to be better humans. And in order to be better humans, we have to connect. But we're all like in this. We all have walls up. Not all of us. 
most people have walls up, but we even like super conversational extroverts can get really uncomfortable and weird too. Like even me, like, especially like I'm in, I'm on day five of a six day conference that I'm startup Phoenix here in Phoenix, mm. obviously um, Phoenix startup week. That's what it is anyway. And even like by yesterday afternoon, one of my friends comes into the volunteer room and she's just like, I just need to be done for a minute and just be, I'm going to have a complete panic attack and a complete breakdown. I'm like, come introvert right here. This is where your safe space is. And she's like the most outgoing extroverted, whatever, but she's been running a booth for four days. And so she's done. And yeah. so we all get like that where it's just, you just need to. And so it's easy to have a go-to, but I think in business too, it's so easy to say like, you know, I always do business, 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 like a robot. Right. And it's like, <laughs> nobody, that's not fun. It's not engaging. It's not interesting. And so it's like, how do you make your business interesting and fun and make that part of your brand is kind of where we go with it, where it's like, what's the human side of your brand? Um, so like the human side of our brand is a dog. Um, so we have ironically, <laughs> ironically. So Susan in HR is their director of HR. And um, she has a headshot and a bio on our website and um, it tells her story. And it is literally the, she brings in more business than the other, the rest of us do because she's hilarious. Like people come to our site and they're like, I came to your site and then I, I was looking to see who I'd be working, you know, see what I'm interested in. And then I saw the dog and I thought I need to talk to these guys. Literally like that's what people say. Or she also used to come to co-working with us when we worked down downtown at a co-working space. And it's just, she breaks down a barrier that we're real life humans, just that, like everybody else. That's amazing. Cause normally people are afraid of HR people. Well, yeah. she's kind of a bitch. Well, I mean, that's her job, but, <laughs> and, and I feel like she should be my new best friend, but here's the, here's the little takeaway. I'm going to extract. Okay, okay. All of y'all that are listening, do you see the importance of putting humanity on your about page? Stop saying things that don't make any sense. If you read it to the person next door, they don't know what you're doing. We want to see pictures of you in yep. real life. Yep. We want to know more about you than what's on LinkedIn. We've already seen you on LinkedIn. We already looked at you on LinkedIn. We want right. to know who we're working with. This well, it's so important. It's so important because you have to connect like, and this is what we tell people when we talk about websites is it's like, it's your digital storefront. There's no store for somebody to walk into and say hi to the owner and build a relationship. And so your website has to do that. And if you walk into a store and nobody's there and you're just dealing with robots, then you feel like you're at the self checkout of fries and you want to murder everybody because nothing scans like it's supposed to, which is my pet peeve. But it is like, that's the thing. Like you have to be able to build, you have to build connections. You have to build relationships, but you have to let down the walls so you can connect with people first. And that's the part that I was terrified to do because then they won't look like a grown up. And I'm like, grown ups are boring. Who wants to be a grown up? Like <laughs> I, you can be a real life professional. That's really fun and get a lot of stuff done. Or you can be really boring and still get stuff done, but nobody wants to pay attention to it. So that's yeah, fascinating. It's interesting. It's interesting what you said about working at um, at at different um, you know places where you're renting out a space or you're doing like a co working space or something like that, because of the fact that you don't all work for the same company, you're mm -hmm. not all forced to interact with one another. Which you know, like at least at my work, everyone gets together and they're like, okay, so let's uh, all talk about this thing or let's break off into groups and we'll discuss something and then we'll randomly pick somebody and make it awkward and then they have to like you know answer the question that you know was happening or or stuff like that like they 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 work out these ways of doing that well we're, we're where you're near a co-working co space you kind of walk in you sit down you do your thing and then you leave and that's it but these are essentially they're they may not be your co-workers but you're working together in some you know shape or form you'll see them in the break room you'll see uh -huh. them in wherever the little areas are that you hang out at the, those sorts of things. So if you're not if you're not familiar with these people, you have to come up with some way of kind of making that happen. Yeah. So those strategies, it seems like a kind of a, a, a interesting way of doing it. Well, and when we worked at the co working space too, actually, we uh, my coworker and I, my um, partner and I are both we're just both outgoing and we like people, and so and it and 
that I think makes it easier for us, but also we would, um, the place we worked actually was very good at trying to kind of make those interactions happen too. They had a lot of community events and things like that and which it's a good vibe, but still there's like, even when you do those things, you have to get past the, my name is Amber and I'm a writer and this is what I do and here's my card and be my, you know, and it's like, and or the opposite when you go somewhere and somebody's like, they have, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those things where somebody comes up and they hand you a card immediately, shake your hand, tell you who they are. And then like you, they're like, so what do you do? And you tell them what you, the, you do and you can see like the light drain from their eyes because you are not a prospective client and therefore are not an important human. And they oh, walk away. Yes. Yes. And it's the worst. It's but the partnerships worst. are just as important as being a client. At some point, somebody's going to go, I don't know how to write words. I don't know how to put these things together. And oh, I'm talking to Bridget and I'm stuck talking to Bridget and she's just not going to buy anything from me. But really, Bridget could be writing those words for you and putting those together and you could have your, you know, whatever it is that you need to done. Like those yep. potential partnerships are just as important as, you know, getting people to, uh, to, to buy and sell your stuff. Yeah, that was my first and last Chamber of Commerce event. Oh, yeah, those are the worst. Well, and that's the thing like press meetups. The kind of events you go to, I think, are really important too. So that's why I love the WordPress community. Like, I, when I started going to WordPress stuff, actually, I was not building websites, I was just doing copy. I was doing copy and I was doing media because PR is my background, which is why I want to talk to you about that, Jason. PR is my background. Yeah. And, oh. um, and so, but then I actually met my business partner at a co-working space here in Phoenix because we talked to each other and he, we were brainstorming ideas for like, I was helping him brainstorm ideas for a client he had that was not my client. I was, he was, and then reverse, we were just picking brains, right? That's where we're like, we really come up with like, if your idea is an 80% idea, my idea is an 80% idea, we come together and we build an idea that becomes a 150% idea. Like that's where the magic happens is that collaboration. And now we've been working together for three and a half years. And now we're that's building cool. websites because he's a developer. And like, and it's like, we have this whole process that just moves everybody through the flow of like, you know, I need a website. What are you going to put on the website? So we build all of that. The content problem doesn't exist because we do the content for the clients as we build the site. And then it just like flows through. I would never have had that streamlined process if I didn't, first of all, like acknowledge another human in the space. Second of all, have a conversation that didn't benefit me in the initial, like, it wasn't like, oh, this conversation is going to benefit me. I'm not interested. Instead, it was like, I'm going to help a fellow human, and that's cool. And he's now my friend. And then it's like, oh, we really work well together. And it's that's where the I, I think it's like the collision of ideas is where like genius happens or something is some quote somewhere. And it is like that collaboration is where the, that's where the magic is. Yeah, so. Stephen B. Johnson says at the end of his talk where ideas come from that chance in a chance favors the connected mind and he also has a book that i actually read called wonderland the art of play or how play made wonderland how play made the modern world which is fascinating and there's a podcast too okay because like we are you touched on it with the question mm -hmm. um you brought i just want to roll back a little bit because i love that you said Adults are boring. When you ask about a dinosaur, all of a sudden we've come. We, we've, blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden we become five again. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna. Of course, I agree with this. That's why we're having this episode. That's why we're having this conversation. But it's not fun if I'm not the devil's advocate. So I'm gonna be the devil's advocate. Okay. I'm, I'm an introvert. Let's do some role play. Kay. Okay. So <laughs> I'm a developer. I'm busy. I don't have time. And this is my question. What's the ROI of asking about dinosaurs? <laughs> um, so engineers love dinosaur questions the most because they're the biggest nerds and the biggest children at heart. But <laughs> um, I don't think, so there's a book that I'm going to sidetrack this, which is it's called The Diversity Bonus. Um, and if you haven't read it, you should. It's by Scott Palmer, and it talks about the importance of having diversity of thought and diversity yes. on your team and all of those things, because that's where you get bigger and better ideas, right? 
And so the ROI, but the thing is, is when you, and his whole book is, his whole book, and he has a great talk. It's like a, it's like a, an hour and a half long talk that he delivered at Penn State, like some college, university, business school or whatever that's fascinating too. And he talks about how you can have one really great idea, but when you add 10 other great ideas to the room, then you get, what happens is when you have people around the table that aren't all, they don't all look the same, they don't have the same background, they're all. So if you have a table of 10 white men developers, I'm not gonna call out any specific companies right now, but we know they I'm gonna exist. call it guys. If we have the guys, yeah. And they're all from, you know, solidly middle-class families and they're all went to college in the Midwest and they all, whatever, whatever, whatever. Then they're, when they build a website, they're not going to think about the person who's deaf or who's blind or who is a woman or who is like any of the, and so then the website they build is going to look like a bunch of white dudes sitting in suits around a table and it's going to be boring and bland and we wants to read it and it doesn't relate to people. And it's not just about white dudes. It could be the same with an all woman because I work with one of my very good friends in an all woman. And the thing is that diversity fosters empathy. And if you don't have empathy, you will never understand your customer. So, but but I know that I sidetracked you a little bit. Right. But I I'm curious though, like in all seriousness, has has anything has anybody ever like shut down because you asked a weird question like that? Have they like walked what would, has have you had adverse reactions to it? Um I so I'm I, I suspect that this happens to you too. People either really, really love me or they really, really don't like me. And there yeah. is very little in the middle of that. Like cilantro. Like, yes, I am like cilantro. I am the spice of your taco, and you either love me or I taste like soap and you just need to get me out of your mouth. Anyway, but it's like <laughs> it, it is. It's like it, and I'm okay with that. And I think that's part of it is being okay with the fact that some people won't find you funny. Like yesterday I was, um, I was doing the closing remarks and, and, and my, one of my other teammates, we were doing the closing remarks and in, introducing the very last speaker of the day, who's some fancy pants, whatever. And somebody else who's a fancy pants, whatever in the community was introducing them who I didn't know. And I made a joke on this because when I do WordPress conferences, when I MC the room, which is my favorite way to volunteer, because then I get to introduce all of the people. But I, what I do is I never read their bio. I instead like scope all their social media and find interesting facts to tell people about them. Cause that's a lot more interesting. Which should be in your bio anyway right or like in denver i introduced the guy I told him i was gonna make stuff up if he didn't tell me anything and he's like go ahead and then i did and i made him defend it on stage when he got anyway sidetrack but so we're standing here to the edge and i'm like okay so i'm gonna go over parking for tomorrow and the plane whatever whatever and then um and then jack's gonna introduce you and he's like yeah i've done some research and i have some things to say i'm like and he's gonna make up three of those facts and you have to say what's wrong and the person who was going to interview her was like, <gasps> and I literally had to put my hand on her shoulder. And I'm like, I'm just kidding. Jack would never do that. And that's why he's introducing you and I'm not. <laughs> that's awesome. But I'm like, yeah, but at WordPress events, it goes over really well. But I think, so there are people that aren't going to like you and aren't going to like your style. The same with your business and your business style. And that's okay. Because that's why you have partners in the community that, do things a little differently than you that you can refer them to. And that's where it's like some of my, my best like, partnerships here in town are other marketers. They're other marketing branding agencies. They're people who are my friends who I consider colleagues who I will like, if I'm running into a problem, I can say, you know, Mike's been in business for 10 years longer than me. I'm going to call Mike up and ask his opinion and get his advice on this. And Mike, theoretically we're c competitors in that way. He could take this client or whatever, but I know he, they're my client and it's like, and if it's a good fit for me, it's actually probably not going to be a good fit for him and vice versa. And so that collaboration and partnership is good too. And so some people, not everybody's your client, not everybody's your friend. I mean, I assume you're my friend until you tell me otherwise. And you have to be really specific, Amber, I'm not your friend. And then I'll stop <laughs> trying like kind of thing. But <laughs> But, and I will be sad for a minute, but the ROI of asking weird questions back to the engineer question is, it's actually, it's a surprise. It's a bonus. You can't predict it. 
Hmm. Because it is like the more conversations you have, um, then the more people you meet and the more opportunities exist. And so that's where really the, that's where the, if you're looking at it from a numbers game, um, then it's like, if I go to a, a, if I go to an event and I only talk to two people because I'm weird and awkward and I don't know how to talk to people or like, I only talk to people I already know, then you're not going to have those opportunities. Whereas like, if I, I'm so I also, Bridget was telling us before we got started, you were telling us about going to the car dealership and making friends and talking to all the people. That, I mean, that's hundred percent me. Like I have four teenage kids and they're like, the moment I start talking to somebody, they roll their eyes and they're like, can we just take the car home and come get you later? Because they know <laughs> like that's what's gonna happen. But they're like, you seriously talk to everybody. But then one of my kids tried, she's like, I, I waited in the parking lot and they went in to get groceries and she came back out and she's like, mom, I tried to talk to somebody like you do and they just thought I was weird. And it was like, <laughs> But then she's like, I said, what happened? And she said, it was a lady who was like saying something about work or something. And she chimes in my 17 year old. And she's like, oh, I know work. Right. And I'm like, she probably thought you were being snotty <laughs> because she's like, you're a 17 year old kid. What do you know about it? And she wasn't, she was just trying to empathize, but from the, like, anyway, but the bonus is if you talk to a hundred people a week, that's a hundred people you could interact with, have a spark of connection, have that creativity. You could have like the ability to find commonalities. If you only talk to five a week, you have the same opportunities. It's just going to take you, you know, it's going to take you like, 20 weeks to get to the same amount of people somebody else talks to in a week. So that's, it's a bonus and it's a surprise and you never know what's going to happen. But the more often you make the, the space for it to happen, then the more often it will happen. And now I'm just rambling. So, <laughs> well, I was well, gonna er let <laughs> oh, go, go for it, Bridget. I was just, I was just wondering, like, so, okay, so now I'm in. Like, you convinced me that I could go to a networking event or chat somebody up at the baseball game or the bar or whatever. I'm gonna try that at the bar. Uh, Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> how do you choose which networking events to go to? So this oh, is boy. where. I used to go to a lot of networking events because I was already like dressed in downtown and, you know, dropping by for an hour wasn't a big deal. But now I live like I live 30 minutes from downtown and I work from home now. And so um, I have to be a lot more cheesy because it's a lot more energy and it takes a lot more time. Um, but when I first got started doing my stuff, I was doing just PR and writing. And I noticed that all of my um, the other people I knew in the PR writing space who are also doing this would only go to PR events. And, and I was like, what kind of writing do I want to do? And I'm a super nerd. Um, I love complicated, scientific, technical stuff. I like writing about it in interesting ways and making it interesting and engaging. And so I'm like, I need to go to where the nerds are that have the words that need to be written, but don't know how to write them. And that's, that's how I started doing WordPress stuff, actually, where I was like, you have a bunch of different people writing, building websites for a bunch of different kinds of websites and content and stuff. And so I was like, then I'm going to show up and I'm like, I'm a writer. I'm not a website developer, but I can write words. I can write lots of words for you and I can understand it. And so that's where I started going. But then I was like, I love science stuff. I go to all kinds of science events. I go to, I go to science lectures at ASU. I go to, um, like, they we have a bunch of different, like, really cool science stuff going on at ASU. And so I'll go to the lectures where they're, they're talking about their new satellite program or their new research they're doing for this or whatever. And um, I just talk to people. I, I'll go by myself. I'll talk to the people around me. I'll go to the, the hangout afterwards. I'll find a group of people that I don't know that are kind of talking together and I kind of insert myself and i like, oh, it's just that sounded interesting. And then I engage and then I invite myself to go out for drinks with them afterwards. Like, but I, I, it's a problem. I really like people a lot, but that's where it's like, I go to networking events. I look for the ones that are not specific to my field. Yeah. Um, to look for, if I'm looking for, to build relationships for work purposes. Um, when I'm working on, I have a book, I have a couple books, but I have a book I'm working on pretty seriously right now. So when I want writing feedback from writers, then I go to writing groups, but usually I'm science or tech events is where I go to. Although um, I do like community events too. So if it's just like for my local side of the Valley or, but I think you have to conserve your energy that way too, because you can burn out fast. 
So, um, but that's why, yeah. I don't do coffees very often. I don't do lunches very often because um, it eats into my work day. I'm like super productivity mode lately, but I, but I do virtual hangouts and I do virtual coffees. And that's another way to reconnect with people after the event is to do that. So. What do you think, Jason? I mean, you're pretty extroverted. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I was running my, my own, um, my own business, um, doing web development, I, I, I don't know. I went to all of the events. I went to the, the, was it the, the kind of, I, I was only in it for so long that I didn't really care about it, but it was that idea that you had to like show up with a certain number of leads for somebody else in the group. I oh forget that i am not working for somebody else i i am not good at being an affiliate marketer and that sounds like affiliate marketing in meat space and and i don't need to deal with that so i i'm i'm i was like nope i did the um you know kind of get involved in the local community stuff and all the business the business things with that um that was hard too and that's where it's like you know what i'm just gonna do um our um I'm just going to do the meetups and, and just kind of focus on meetups. And so, yeah, but we're going to jump into that in just a second. But I do want to tell us about our friends over at Kinsta.com. If you're tired of unreliable or slow hosting, check out Kinsta.com, who takes managed WordPress hosting to the next level. Powered by Google Cloud, all their plans include PHP 7.4, SSH access for developers, one-click staging area, 20 global data centers, free SSL, free CDN, by the way, there's a lot of free going on in here, 24-7 uh, expert support who can also migrate your site free of charge. Um, visit them over at kinsta.com. And if you want to take a look at their tour of their latest dashboard iteration, um, you go take a look at that over at demo.kinsta.com. Thank you, Kinsta, for helping us out. We really appreciate it. Hey, as an aside, they're also hiring a full-time social media manager. If you want to be an employee, go find their job board. Oh, Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Go. So you alluded to earlier about talking about PR. Do you want to jump into that a little bit and we can kind of discuss some of those parts of it? Yeah. Like how do you humanize it? <laughs> how do you so, humanize but still it? do it right. So actually when you do PR right, you're humanizing it. That is, that is the yeah. secret. It's all about building relationships. And so, and the reason I bring this up is because um, Jason posted the other day on Twitter, you were like, how come... I sent out a press release and I didn't get any responses at all. Right. right. So like not even a one, not even still how haven't. How many? Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions first and then yeah. like, we'll use you as a case study. Please um, do. Cause so I did it all wrong. <laughs> what was the, what was the press release about? Uh, the press release was about a um, a show that we're doing now on Water Coolers Network, where we do a monthly show that's about WordPress development and okay. only development. So after you know many many years, uh, seven years plus of doing WP Water Cooler, we've tried to like stick to only talking about things that either newbies or just like people that aren't developers would be able to kind of grasp the concepts and and work with, and so. Because of that, we um, we wanted to be able to make it so that we could talk about developer type things as well. And so we started a whole show just devoted to that. And we do that once a month and it replaces one of the water cooler episodes that we do during that month. So um, who did you send who did you send the press release to? I only sent them to properties that are WordPress related. So all of the news organizations or news folks that do um, that sort of thing on, you know, in, in our community in our community specifically okay. yeah so um and when you so what it wasn't necessarily um well what was your subject line oh good question i'll have and, to load it up and look and did you send it in a group did you like see bcc everybody or did you send it no, individually individually yep. okay and did you know specific did you send it to the outlet or the editor or a writer i sent it uh well most of these sites are set up so like one person's running it but they're 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 running as a runner, they're acting as it's a royal we, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. So like um, the I sent it to the you know speak to the editor or ask the editor or contact the editor or something like that, because most of these places don't really have like a way of intaking uh, press releases, mm -hmm. and most of them don't even give you the email address. 
Mm-hmm. They only give you a form to fill out. So I can't even page. attach a PDF to it saying, here's my you know press release. Here's it in various formats. Here's some of the collateral with it. Here's like all the stuff. So I had to put that on my own website. And then I said, here's my press release. Here's the link that goes to it. And at the bottom, by the way, here's the PDF if you want it. So it's like silver platter. Here you go. But I don't know if that was enough. So it's actually probably too much. Um, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. So you want to have all of that stuff available, but right. really when you're, and so on most of the, the media I've done has all been on um, large national or regional publications. So it's like, you know, the Arizona Republic or um, the, like the local, our local news stations, um, or I've, um, we had a client who uh, we actually it was more about the value of the story than it was anything else. It was salacious. And so we got um, pitched it and got international coverage across the, every major outlet, every major publication covered like twice in like a one month period. But it was a, it was a salacious criminal case that, yeah. Anyway, it was crazy. But the way that happens, the way that happened is I made one phone call to the right, the right reporter, um, who covered that cover, he covered both politics and he covered local politics and he covered um, uh, criminal cases here in Phoenix, but he covered them, um, but he also, he was an AP writer. So it went, it was, became syndicated by the AP. So that would kind of blew up, but it was, I had zero press releases. I had zero, infor- like I just, I made a phone call and I, and this is kind of the secret too, is I, I picking up the phone and making a phone call and having a conversation shapes the story better than any other way to do it. Um, You don't necessarily want to do that most of the time, actually. Um, In this case, it was like, I just want to make sure I'm talking to the right person to send the right person the story. And then he's like, well, tell me what it's about. And then I, by the time I gave him my 10 second spiel on it, he's like, okay, tell me more. And we, I start a conversation and then I can send him the information with yeah. uh, something like that, like a press release. Like, do you know the name of the person running the website at any of the places where you send it to? Yeah. And they know who I am too, which was interesting, which is the only reason why I was sending this out. Cause to be perfectly honest, I live in, I live in a town called Whittier. If mm-hmm. I sent this to the Whittier daily news, they're not going to run it. No one's right. going to talk about some podcast that happens in their small town or, or their whatever. And, so for me, it's like I wouldn't want to send this to Forbes. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to send this to you know to to the you know business dot com and all these like right. you know big big organizations because it's it's not it's not the type of stuff that they would normally run. Right. Where somebody in the WordPress community would totally run it because it's WordPress related, and if they've even listened to a single podcast, they would know that there's more than just one that's out there. So right, but um, so this is where I would this is the human side of it. You yeah. sent an email to their catch all info at blog.com yep. with a bunch of information um, and a press release that um, wasn't probably very human as if it was a formal press release, it wasn't. Yeah. I would say the better thing the and you can still do this um, would mm-hmm. be to n- however you have contact with them in as a person, as a human. So if you are, if you are connected on Twitter, if you have their personal email, if you have them on Facebook, if you know their phone number, um, I would say start with a, Hey friend, whatever their name is. Um, we're starting a new podcast specifically for developers. I'd love to like talk to your audience about it. I think it'd be really useful for them because of what it does. Um, yeah, here's here's what I had. <laughs> um, well, and so scroll down, Smith. Um, yeah. So there's, n- I mean, with love, not enough in there for them to do anything with other than republish it, and it's really just an announcement of a show. Yep. So I would actually offer up a why it's a problem. So it's what is the problem you're solving? How is it interesting to their audience? This is how we're solving it. And then, right. and, and so then it's, um, which you kind of do, but not in a human, not in a human way. So it's like, um, and that's where it's, um, 
I would probably I would change that conversation because if these are publications, they want to write they're writing stories. Right. Coming up with content and writing longer form content is a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, and so you could say like, hey, I would love to talk to you about this problem. This is why we decided to do it. But then say, can I can I submit an article talking about it mm. and then write an article? I say no to a lot of those. <laughs> like I get those I get those people that send you an email saying, you know, I want to guest blog on your on your site, and it's somebody from some company who's trying to do right something. And but I'm, you know the editor, right? Right. This isn't a cold contact. You know their yeah, yeah, audience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and 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 you have you're solving a problem that their audience should want to hear about, and sure. so if you can do it in a way that's like, um, where it's and then it's a friend of yours, or at least at least some of you know, yeah. then it's a it's a different story than somebody cold contacting you as a pitch. But that's the secret too. And I have a whole article that I actually am almost done publishing about how to be a good guest poster. Mm. Um, and that is, and, and if you can do that well, and even if it's like, I'm interested, if I, if I send what I've been working on over to you, we at least look at it. And then right. they, rather than like, here's my pitch and press releases look like pitches and they look like, it looked like a pitch for your subject. Like it's, well, yeah, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm pitching what they're trying to find. Like they're going and scouring the internet, looking for all this stuff. They can't look at every single website and every like single they everything. They literally wrote a story about somebody put something on GitHub. What the actual F. Just yeah. stuff so, like GitHub all and, the time. What's interesting for me about this was that I wanted to I wanted to test the waters of what mm -hmm. PR actually does in the WordPress space because for mm -hmm. me this is a story for myself. Mm -hmm. I mean I'm not a news organization but we we talk about this stuff all the time. We yeah. hyperanalyze what happens in our industry, and so when you're looking at this stuff, you're like, so should you send a press release? I mean, no joke, Bridget and I are going to have a, another one of these where we're going to say, like, should you send a press release and get some people that have tried to send press releases out to see if that even works or not? I'm going to say in WordPress. In okay. WordPress. Only to WordPress, only within WordPress. Like I said, Forbes doesn't care about this stuff. Right. Forbes cares if, like, Automatic gets sold to Google or something. But right. that's, like, the only thing that they're going to care about is that because, so, you know. As a PR person, I think the press release is dead. Oh, I, I tried it. I, I'm not going to do it again. Even in major for major publications and major stories, the press release is an afterthought. The mm. goal, like it, because this is and this is where like some of the, it's the vanity metrics come in, where if you go to a big PR firm and they write you a fancy press release or if you go to like um, they'll, and they and they put it um, because they can run it on. Um, there's a couple different platforms where they put it. Essentially, they syndicate your press release. Press and they, PR and wire. Yeah, like yeah, PR, PR wire. And, yeah. and, and it goes all of these places. And then the and I didn't want that. They're like, you get this many impressions and this many views. And right. it's like, what does that mean? Yeah, it ran on the New York Times. Did it? No, it didn't. It ran on the New York Times on page 47 of their website for 30 seconds. Yep. Did, like, and the New York Times gets this many million views from their front page a month, not of this page of their website. And then, but then they're like, this is your, but then, so when you ask the question, what is the actual ROI of this? If I'm going to be my developer friend at a party yeah, yeah. asking about dinosaurs, this is where <laughs> I'm like, this is literally as a PR person where I would have to say like, um, I don't, Think the ROI of that, unless it's moving numbers, if you send out a press release about a new food dish you're serving at your restaurant and you don't see an uptick in business, then that PR worth is zero. And that's pretty much what I'm doing. I, I, this is one of the shows I do, and this is the show, and this is what we are what we are doing. And to be honest, like what's hard about it is is this is something just like what happens on every one of our episodes is we're essentially pitching something that hasn't happened yet. So for this, we sent out a thing like a week beforehand saying, hey, just let you know, here's what's going on. I know the news cycle may take two weeks. It may take whatever. Somebody's on vacation, whatever. But collectively, WordPress itself went on vacation for a week and, and didn't look at any of this and didn't really care much about it, which is fine. That's OK. But yeah. for me, it's like, eh, well, maybe press releases suck. Maybe they're not. Maybe that's not what I need to do for this industry. We don't I operate don't think it is what you do for this industry, yeah. actually. Yeah. I think it's it's going on guesting guest 
um, being a guest on other podcasts that have similar related interests um, that they listen to. It's writing guest posts about mm -hmm. what you're talking about and why and sharing those, but doing it in a way where you're a good party guest. Um, and it's also like, it's, it's still, it's building relationships. So you can have, because when I did PR, like I, I did PR for um, a, a, a national restaurant. And I had to know the food writer in every city where I ha we had a location because what would happen was like, if I sent out a press release, it didn't matter. They weren't going to show up. But if I like sent them an email because I already worked with them before and broken through by, by being ignored 10 or 15 times before we finally worked together. But then when we worked together, I was pleasant and I was charming. I was a human. We built a relationship. They think I'm funny. I asked about their dog. Like literally this, like I would know all of these things because I kept a log and a track on my computer so I can remember all the things as I talked to these people all over the country. And it was like, then it would be like, hey, we're opening a new restaurant. It's 30 minutes from the town that you're in. Do you cover that location or does somebody else? Can you introduce me to them? And then it's like, hey, we're going in. We'd love to have you come in for a free sushi rolling class with the chef. You can bring your camera. You can put it on the news. Or you can just try the food and tell people about it later. And then it was like, then it became easy. But yeah, I have right. to like worm my way in there first yeah, for yeah, that yeah. to happen. And you still yeah. have to be a human. And I would still write a press release. And I would send a press release. I did not want them to publish the press release. The press release is for them to pull other information out. So they have in written format where the restaurant is, when it's opening, what the hours are, what the specials are going to be, um, any other information you want them to know in a hard written format. But the story, if they publish the press release, doesn't do me any good. But if they show up and they talk to the chef and they taste some sushi and they have an experience, first of all, then they're now a fan. Second of all, they're sharing their experience as a fan and that's where the value is. Right. So. Also, if these if these publications are interested in what you're doing, they have your audience, invite them on as a guest. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, really good. And yeah. then it's like, so it's that, it's still, it's humaning. It's all humaning. It's I mean, humaning. for the story for me, I, I want to hit up somebody that I sent one of these to and say like, how does press releases work for us in this industry? And use that angle as my way of figuring it out. Or yeah. somebody who cranks out a bunch of these and you know, they, they're, they're a prolific developer or something like that. And, you know, talk with them and kind of figure out, you know, is this, is this, is this worth doing or not? Or are we not treating them one way or the other, or should yeah. we be treating them different either as a person submitting or as a person that's receiving yeah, um, yeah. real quick, uh, Beth in the chat says, I agree. It doesn't work in our industry, but press releases still work for traditional media like TV uh, stations, but I send links via Twitter. They're hungry for the content, which is for me, this is exactly what I was thinking because I'm not pitching a story. I'm just making it known that the thing was happening. And so right. it's like, is this, is this interesting to you or not? Even just not as, as a person um, or rather as a website, but rather as a person, mm -hmm. is this something that's interesting yeah. or not? So, and I would say, I agree with Beth for national TV and press, although there still is the, you always have, you send a press release, you still have to have an email that goes with that press release. And usually right. they don't open attachments. Um, uh, great, they will not open attachments. So that's when you say I attach as a PDF. Like our rule of thumb is you send, you have your pitch, which is like, your angle for that story for their station for their viewers then you right. have you paste in you copy and paste in the body of Which your email the yeah. press release for more information see below and then you say if you'd like additional i have photos i have this i have this i have this i can send those as a follow-up if you're interested okay that's because yeah. a lot of times they'll get cool. bounced if they have too many attachments right because attachments right. and that's a whole nother and you can't attach marketing. if you're using a, a, a form anyhow because they didn't have a place so to put it stupid i hate it but I want to tell you about vendor fuel vendor fuel is a next generation shopping cart plugin that will ignite your e-commerce built using angular js vendor fuel lets you keep your customers on your website for the entire checkout process start a 90-day free trial now and ignite your e-commerce at vendorfuel.com and i just heard that woocommerce changed their pricing again so if you're looking for something different that's fast and robust and the pricing doesn't change, check out Vendor Fuel. Tool or tip of the week time. Mm -hmm. This time it is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. 
And it's a classic. It's written kind of like Proverbs, you know. It's really easy to read. And um, the reason why is this is the best book on military strategy. And Bridget, why are you talking about military strategy on a WordPress show? Because business is war and marketing is strategy. That's why. Okay. I read this because I'm always talking about the battle of the bulge. Because So here's the thing. I'm going to do a tiny, tiny little bit longer reason. A lot of times you come up, you have these client calls in marketing and they're like, duh, 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 duh. you should do it like this. And I'm like, oh, really? When's the last time where you, you were a practitioner? You know, when's the last time you actually were in the home feed of Twitter and not using some third party, whatever? So do you really know how it works? No, because things iterate. And if you don't know the tactics, your strategy will be off because even if it's off by one degree, it's off. OK, and I see this all the time. People doing these stupid things that disconnects them from interacting with humans, scheduling everything or auto posting. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. So I talk about the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge, they thought that division was just going to die. And General MacArthur was like, well, sorry. OK, and but Patton knew that he could get there. General Patton was a boots on the ground general. He knew his men. He knew what they could do. He was the furthest away because he was in North Africa, but he knew he could get there. And the only reason why those people lived and now have descendants is because General Patton knew his men and he knew what they could do. It was a miracle in, in, in military strategy. But... Uh, and you can watch Band of Brothers and you get a whole insight on that. <laughs> but um, so I so like I like I kept reading all these little proverbs. And one of the ones I highlighted from chapter three is the skillful leader subdues the enemy's troops without fighting. He captures their cities without laying siege to them. And he overthrows their kingdom without lengthy operations of the fields. So like I read that and I go, oh, I win my clients without putting down my competitors. Mm -hmm. I win the business without putting the client down. I make my business goals without wasting money on advertising things that don't work like PRWire.com. So that's my <laughs> tool or tip of the week. The Art of War, very small, super easy read. I'm sure it's on Kindle, but I like to, you know, write in my books. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Amber, do you want to go next or do you want me to go next? Um, I can go next. Okay, go for it. I have a good one. Um, uh, I'm, I, if you have a website or run a website or any of those things, like uh, privacy laws are important. I learned about Termageddon probably three or four months ago at a WordPress meetup, actually. Um, somebody's like, oh, Termageddon's this thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, vaguely listened, but not really. Because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a GDPR, I only do business here, blah, blah, blah. And then um, I actually, at WordPress WordCamp Phoenix, um, I introduced the president of Termageddon um, for her talk on why privacy laws are important. Um, her name is Donata, and she is a badass lawyer. And um, she, and I was listening to it and I was like, and I was only halfway paying attention. I'm going to be completely honest. I was halfway mm -hmm. paying attention. It was like the sixth, you know, shift of the day and I needed to send some emails. And, but listening to her talk about it, she was like, it, it, even just halfway listening, I was like, oh yeah, this is really important and it's going to be good for our clients and whatever. But I only still, I came home from that and I was like, meh. And then I was then I was trying to do a lead gen form ad on Facebook for one of our clients. And they're like, you need a link to your privacy policy. And I was like, they don't have a privacy policy. And I was like, what are we going to do? And then like, oh, and so I went to Termageddon. And I'm like, and I thought like, this is going to be expensive is what I thought because they update it as the laws and the rules change. It's not expensive. It's like 10 bucks a month per site. What? That's it? If, if you're paying full retail, if you are an agency, if you're WordPress agency, you get the agency price. 
which, so if you're doing more than one, so you get free, you get free policies for your website as an agency. I know, write that down, Bridget, write it I down. I did, I did. It's going to be in the show notes. Yeah, you get a free policy for your, if you're, and then you get a resell to your clients. And it's like $4 a site is There's what you no, pay. That's so, that's ridiculous. They need to raise those prices, but go buy it right now before <laughs> I, they listen to me. And <laughs> this is why WordPress agencies have no money for marketing. Your prices are too damn low. But their marketing is amazing, actually. I know. So this is the I'm, other thing is that, so Donata's a badass. Hans is her fiance and so when I signed up, I got an, I got, and I said, I want to sign up as an agency. The email I got from Hans was like, um, I checked out your site. I love your colors and branding. Susan's hilarious and adorable. I'm like, oh, this is a real human who really went to my site to really validate that I'm doing this and verify it. And then he's like commenting on it as a real, like, it was like a two paragraph email and it's like below is all the other stuff you need to know. But yeah, you guys are approved looking forward to, you know, getting to know you guys better. And it's like, and every email I've gotten since then, even the ones that are like follow up, I can tell they're MailChimp oriented. They're, they're hilarious. They have cartoons. They have like, like they're just like, they're a real human company, but yeah, you need to go do your privacy policies and go do their things. And, all of the stuff and they're fantastic and they're great. And like we added it to our web hosting plans for existing clients as a value add. We're like, we're adding this because you need to have it. We're not gonna charge it. Nothing changes in your monthly cost. We need to answer these few questions. And so our clients, cause we're not charging them an extra $4 a month. We're not charging them anything. It just goes into our standard plan. They're like, oh, you're going to do all this legal stuff for me for free? I don't have to add anything. And then they're like, Smart. delighted. They're all delighted. And so, um, yeah, Termageddon, check them out. Go be an agency partner and then put your clients on it because it's sweeping the nation. There's like 20 states now that have privacy rules. And you might think your clients are small or you're small, but we're going to start. You could start being prosecuted for it in june in california i know in california wow. we always do all the really crazy laws before everybody else yeah so we're kind of used to it yeah the ccpa is the one in california and it went live in january but they can't prosecute till june so get on that now <laughs> <laughs> what about you jason I have a quick question regarding that though. So oh. when you're using, when you're using uh, this tool to, to do this, it, does it, does it, it's generating it, but is it also keeping up with any changes that happen? Yes. And that's the benefit of it. So what it is, is you're embedding a link to the privacy policy and you can share a link to the privacy policy. So your clients can see it before, because I have two clients that are attorneys and so, right. but they're not privacy attorneys. And so um, I said, I'm going to send you a link so you can look at it, make sure you're cool with it, all of the things. And they can go and look at it and edit it and stuff too from the Termageddon site. But then the link, you're embedding the link and then, that's why Donata is important to have on the team because all of the laws are constantly changing. And so she's constantly updating and making sure everything is, is secure. But I think, and I'm going to say this, and it's a question to ask for them too, um, is I, be I believe that they probably carry the policy of liability for the, of some sort, because they're, she's giving you professional stuff. I would guess. That's, okay. Yeah, professional liability insurance. Yeah. And then it's like, so like one of my clients recently had to do there, he was doing um, uh, cybersecurity insurance and he had all these questions to answer. And, um, and that's where that liability would go for that question. It's how I understood it. So, but I'm not a lawyer. I should probably ask them specifically. Do you play one on TV? I play a lawyer and a doctor and a whatever else I need to play. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. A to. dinosaur specialist. Whatever you need me to be, I'll be it. Oh, that's awesome. The benefit of being a writer. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, like I was telling you um, uh, earlier, Amber, regarding these uh, tour tip of the weeks, most of the time it's me just flipping through my phone real quick and seeing like, what's that thing I use all the time? And what is it that I want to share? And is it okay for me to share it so that way people don't go and steal my awesome ideas or whatever? So I want to show you the share this with you real quick. So um, I only got a couple minutes. So this or a minute. So this is a an app called InShot, and what I like about InShot is I can actually make little collages as well as like uh, graphics and stuff oh. with it. So there's a picture of my dog, and I want to share this picture of my dog on a site that is probably going to crop the top and bottom of his head. 
because it's a it's a vertical photo that I took. If I click on canvas down on the bottom here, I can actually switch this between different oh. um, dimensions. Oh. So if I want that, I can also change whether or not I want to zoom it in or make it fit. And I can also change the background. Do I want Ooh, it blurry? I love that. Do I want to change the colors? Ooh. Do I want to have a gradient? Do I want to have polka dots? Aww. So you can do all these sorts of things like super quick and easy. So that way when I share a photo of Lincoln here, he's not going to have his head chopped off. It's just going to be like exactly what I want to show. So there are times where you're going to share something on Twitter or you're going to share something on Facebook or something like that. And you want to make sure it's going to have all the content on the photo. This is super important because I see people do this all the time and it sucks because it's like, dude, you just shared like the photo of your neck. Like what what did you, what did you do here? So you got to look at what's, what is it that you can do with it and how you can take this stuff and kind of, oh, now I'm sharing all my uh, tweets, all my stuff, tweets and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah, go take a look at that. Um, you can go over, um, go into the app store on iPhone. I don't believe it's on Android, but you know, there's always some variant on Android. So go take a look at that. Um, it's called InShot and it's super sweet and it works with collages and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Cool. <sighs> That's it, Bridget. We're Thanks done. For being on the show, Amber. Right. How do people yeah. find you? Um, they can find me on Twitter or Facebook or um, at Amber Peachin. It's P E C H I N. Um, or Amplitude.media is the website. And then um, if they connect with me to those places, they can sign up for my weekly uh, advice column that I just do that's fun. It's called Ask Amber. I answer a question every week, usually with a lot more detail than anybody's interested in. And then I also have tips and things I'm listening to. and it's just fun. So rad. Yeah. Awesome. Well, okay, thanks everybody. for being on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Like thanks, us, guys. share us, send it. Yeah. Send this video in an email to somebody who needs to watch it. Or, or write That's us a really challenge. good press release. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.